withstanding of the devil. Amen? Last week we talked about how the devil likes to attack four territories. Amen. Mm -hmm. How there's four grounds of attack. Amen? amen? Once you are saved, amen, and you have the Spirit of God in you, He's going to attack the mind. Yeah. Because if He attacks the mind, the soul cannot focus into the Spirit. Amen. And, this, and, and therefore, the soul cannot realize its new identity, its new purpose, its new life. Perfect. Now, in this new life, you are going to make mistakes. Amen. And because you're going to make mistakes, Satan will attack the conscience. The, the part of you that tells you you've been doing right or doing wrong. Amen. Anybody who has had a guilty conscience knows that it cripples you. Yeah. You can't appear before God just like Adam and Eve when they sinned. And you can't appear before man. Amen. You feel wretched, awful, terrible because of what you have done. You have condemned yourself all right. Perfect. Now, supposing you get past those two, and no one can approach God if his mind is not focused on God. Well, why would you? you? You couldn't in the first place. And no one will approach God with a guilty conscience. It's impossible. You naturally flee. So God had to give us a new life, releasing the new mind, the mind of Christ. And God had to wash us with the precious blood so we can approach Him. We can accept our forgiveness and our acceptance and we can get to know God and get to know our new life. Now, if Satan cannot stop that union and communion, amen, we are perfected in that union and communion, then he will attack the outer instruments, the body and the environment. Amen. Because if, if once you get to know God, sooner or later you want to manifest God. Of course. You can't gather knowledge of something. You can't continually experience something and not eventually share it. It's impossible. If you play soccer all the time, you're going to talk about soccer. soccer. Whatever you do, you will share. It will yeah. leak out of you. It will come out of you. Yeah. Um, consciously or unconsciously. If it doesn't come out consciously because you're trying to impress yourself, it will come out in your dreams. But it will manifest. The, the mind simply expands what it focuses on. Yeah. So it will attack the body. Satan will attack the body so you can't manifest God because it's the instrument upon this earth to manifest. Yeah. And Satan will attack the environment because though the body can express, it, the body can only express where? Into the environment. Perfect. So if the environment that's hostile to the body expression, the manifestation is choked or suffocated. Perfect. Amen? You may want to pray and your body is ready to pray, your body is ready to, to kneel, but the environment is so negative, so full of negative thoughts. It's, it's not a blessed place. There's no presence. People are, are, are hostile. You're like, I can't pray in this place. This is why Christ had to move up way yeah. from the disciples. Yeah. Prophet can't work in their own environment. Do they are a prophet? They're ready to do it. Yeah, Christ could not work in his own hometown. Yeah. He could not work in the very place he grew up, his very own environment. Sorry. Because there was no faith. Right. In fact, oftentimes when you go into an environment, sometimes you have to preach, sometimes you have to pray for a while. You have to worship for a while. Why? You're trying to sanctify the place. You're just trying to restore the environment so that you can work. Yeah. Amen? The clearer the environment, uh, and, and I'm supposing the spirit is regenerated, the mind is renewed, and the body is healthy. When, when, when this is happening, all you need is a friendly in. Environment. This is why this is why he told Paul, don't go to Asia. You, Paul, you're good. Your spirit is good, your mind is good, your conscience is good. You you never condemn yourself. You know about the precious blood, but you can't go to Asia. I don't have that territory, Paul. Perfect. It's a waste of time. time. It's not a waste of time for you. I'm with you all the time. But nobody will benefit. You can't work. You can't work. You can't express yourself. The devil will not flee. He controls that terror. Torah doesn't control you. Perfect. But he controls the terror. Torah. Perfect. Yes. Yes, this is why, if you're wise, you never just go to any territory. No. You never just go to any, you don't just bless every house. You don't go to preach the gospel everywhere. God has to open a door. Yeah. He has to say, I want you to go to Mississauga. I want you to go here. I want you to work at this keg. I want you to work at the store. I want you to talk to this family. I want you to talk to that person. Perfect. If he doesn't say that, you don't go because he ain't going. So therefore, the environment is under the enemy's control. The Bible says, 
we are not ignorant. We know that the, the, the power of the enemy controls the whole earth, the whole world. The whole world is under the sway and the tendency of the evil one. I'm sorry, we don't have friendly environments. We don't. No. <laughs> we don't have safe houses. Amen. In World War II, there were certain safe houses the Jews could go. If they go to any other of the, the safe house, they are arrested, put in prison. Yeah. Amen? And it's going to get worse and worse. Amen? So those are the four areas of attack. The reason why God has us pray so much, fellowship so much, focus on Him so much, is because the Spirit needs certain things to manage the mind, manage the conscience, manage the body, manage the environment. Both your immediate environment and your distant environment. Perfect. Perfect. Hallelujah. There's your personal environment, your body. There's your abode. The Bible says uh, our, our living space, our abode should be peaceful. That's a promise in Isaiah. Yeah. If there's any unrest in your house, uh, there's something wrong. That's not the promise of God. Amen. Your home environment should always be peaceful. No moral conflict. No agitating passions. No fears and anxieties. Undisturbedness. Perfect. If I go into Sifu's house and I sense disturbedness, there's something wrong. I remember Sifu used to come to the uni center and he used to go, you don't know how to manage the environment yet. Because <laughs> I could sense disturbance. Amen. And I said, what do you mean? Because I was just a newbie at that point. Amen? Amen. Amen. Gradually as you get older, you learn to manage the body, the outer environment. You learn to manage the outer, outer environment, your home. And then you learn to manage your workplace, Perfect. your car, traveling, wherever you Go. Amen. There's a bubble around you. And when people enter this bubble, they start to experience the kingdom of God, Perfect. the domain of peace. Power. Minimum, their mind's clear. They're like, why do I feel so peaceful around you? This is weird. Not being harassed at the yeah. end? Yes. Yeah. Why is my conscience suddenly not harassing me? <laughs> Amen? Amen. Now, Satan also needs you not to maintain your spirit so he can attack those four areas. And there's a specific order. He'll first try the mind. He can't get the mind. No problem. I'll wait for a mistake. Because you're going to make mistakes sooner or later. Uh, a righteous man falls down seven times. Perfect. There you go. You're going to fall down a lot. Amen. But you've got to get up a lot. There's no, nothing wrong with making a mistake. Don't wallow in the mistake. Hallelujah. Now, if he can't attack the mind, if he can't attack the conscience, which is within you, he will attack the vessel, the body. Typically, he likes to attack it with some kind of sickness or illness. Yeah. Amen? And that when he attacks the body, again, he's trying to make you useless so he can't manifest, or he's using the backdoor technique. I'll attack the body to get to the mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He covered Job from head to toe in boils, then he sends his friends to say, you're wrong, activating your conscience, focusing you on sin. <laughs> he used, he's always trying to get back to the mind and conscience. Yeah. He'll use the body. He'll use the environment. You know, you, you notice how some people, they always have drama in their environment. They're always, they always have like a dark cloud. Of, I was just in an accident. I'm going through a divorce. They always have something going on. I was in a car accident. I, I meet these people all the time in, in the world, in the store. They always have some kind of story. Some, something is happening. I'm like, you are infiltrated left and right. If you are saved, this should never happen in your environment. It should be happening in other people's environments, but not yours. Not unless God is doing something drastic like Job. Yeah. Amen? But if God is not doing it, and you are not invoking it with negative thoughts and feelings that attract bad circumstances, it can only be one thing. It can only be what? The devil. Yeah. Mm. Not to no good. Yes. The Bible says that God left the tribes in Israel because he had to teach the new generation warfare. Read it yourself. It's in Chronicles. Amen. So God had to teach them warfare. Well, in, in our, in, that's in the Bible. Mike Murdoch wrote something once, and I really liked it. He said, you never outgrow warfare. Amen. You only eventually learn to fight. Yeah. Which means the war doesn't go away. Not until Christ comes back. The war never goes away, but you either eventually learn to fight or succumb. Take, take your pick. Yeah. You either learn to fight or you learn to lose. And if you learn to fight, the Bible says you have to fight with 
spiritual weapons of warfare, sure. not physical weapons. If you use physical weapons, mental weapons against uh, natural weapons against the enemy, it's a different dimension. Sure. There's no way. You just don't know how to fight him. He's invisible. These things don't even touch him. So we, we, we can't avoid fighting. We must learn to fight. Now, th this is maturity. Maturity is, I know there's a fight, and I know how to fight. Amen. Immaturity is, I'm saved. I just expect the rest of my life to be easy. No warfare. I never have to watch my mind. I never have to guard my conscience. Environment and body, they take care of themselves, don't they? I have a healthy diet. Hey, I'm a good person. I don't think bad things. Satan won't bother me, will he? <laughs> we have a very rude awakening. My friend, the Bible has a history of people getting attacked. <laughs> A history of, of David. Oh, it's springtime. It's warfare. I'm relaxing. You know, he should be at war. He's not doing his purpose. He looks outside in his rooftop. Bingo! Satan plants a seed in his mind. Amen. Takes over his body. Goes commits adultery. Goes commits murder. <laughs> you work fast. He, he works fast. <laughs> what? What's what summer off? What's springtime off? A moment of, of laxity. You know, and Satan's like, oh, let me plant that in you, son. And David, because he's a womanizer in the first place, said, hey, I think like that. I will accept that thought. <laughs> Never knowing it was the enemy who had planted it. We, if we are to grow up, we must realize that our mind, our conscience, our body, our environment are open to attack. If God is not causing it, if I am, how many, how many times have you heard this? I wanted to pray, I meant to pray, but something happened. I felt sick, I got distracted, the telephone rang in the environment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how many times, oh, is that accident? When you have a spiritual purpose and something happens, I tell you. A lot of the time, it is the devil. Amen. Until you know that for sure, you can't fight him. No. Because you don't even know what's going on. Not... Satan will never arouse suspicion. He will always make it seem, no, hey, everybody gets sick. I got sick. <laughs> hey, we all have thoughts that are just, you know, random and, you know, no. we, you know it's, I'm spontaneous. I get these spontaneous thoughts. It's normal, isn't it? Yeah, everybody feels down every now and then. So I did something bad. I'll get over it eventually, three years later. <laughs> you, we hold on to a guilty conscience far too long. We get distracted from spiritual purposes far too much. Amen. We operate in... I, I remember once... You know, this was, was years ago in the Unity Center. I mean, at the beginning of our church, and we were trying to have prayer night. And, you know, we're just like babies. <laughs> we're just literally babies. And we're trying to pray, but there's just all this commotion. And I remember going, Lord, what's, there's just all this, it doesn't seem normal. It's just confusion. Siva was driving by. The Lord made him stop and come up to the Unity Center. And when he came up to me, he only said one thing. Why aren't you praying? <laughs> and, 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 I, and I looked at him and go, I never even thought of it. I was so confused by the environment. And I was such a baby. I didn't even know to turn to God because all things are sanctified by the God, and, but, but by God with prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Sifu had to come, sit there, pray with us, then he could leave. He's doing his errands, but God stops him. Amen? Like, and, and, and we, I think, are bamboozled far, far too often. Yes. It, it, it takes a while to get to know what normal is. Um, 
Watch Minnie wrote a book. It's called The Normal Christian Life. Yeah. Our normal is abnormal. We put up with craziness in the environment. Right. We put up with illness and sickness and hindrance in the body. We put up with, you know, you know, there are saints today, and I know them. They're always carrying a load. They're always going, well, you know, one day I'll get old. One day I'll make up for it. You know, like, they never, ever feel free, clean. They're, they're always, yeah, you know, six years. They're always dragging something along. How can your will, how can your energy harness itself? It's always in the past and in a bad past. Amen. You know, or, 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 or we just kind of just like, you know, walk in a daze and, and, and you know, thoughts can just attack us at will. You know, we can just be sidetracked at will. Well, you know, I wrote in my day book that this is what I wanted to do. But at the end of the day, I did absolutely nothing. You think that's you? You think that's God. And these were good things, godly things, things you prayed about, things you know you should do. So if it's not you that wanted that at the beginning of your, you know, a day plan, yeah. and if it's not definitely not God, because God is a God of purpose, Perfect. amen, then who will it, who should it be? There's only one power behind it all. But he will always mask, he'll never come up in the light, he'll never say it's me. You'll always claim it's natural, it's normal, it's acceptable, it's circumstantial, bad luck. Oh, and if you buy his salesmanship, he works. Yes, he does. And he will need, continue to work. He needs your agreement, your acceptance. You have sovereign will. He needs you to say, okay. Then he can move in. Remember, he's searching for ground. So he's searching your mind. Can, is there a way? Is there a way? He's searching your mind. Where can I get? Can I get it through Anessa? Can I get it? Well, how can, the mailman. How, how can I get into the room? He's always guilt. What did you do three years ago? What did you just do now? He's always looking. And he has an intelligence network of demons. They're always feeding him data. And he's sending it out. He's always looking for a way into the territory. Once he has a foothold... From that foothold, he will attack. Yeah. Once I get you in a lock, I attack you because of that lock. If I don't have you in a lock, I can't, I, I, I can't brace you up to take a punch. Satan has to get a foothold. He has to get some, a foothold in your conscience. A thought you like that it energizes with his thoughts. He has to get something compatible. He has to get something in your environment from his into your camp. Like stolen jewelry, like the, the like eye or or idols or something, he has to get something of his into your environment, into your body, into your mind, into your conscience. Now he has a way in because you accept that thing. He goes, I have something in common with you. Therefore, you and I can have commerce, business. That's why Christ said. I have nothing in common with the enemy. Nothing of his belongs to me. I don't let anything of what he has into me, and I don't go out to get what he has. So the devil and I have nothing in common. Therefore, he has no right to talk to me. He has no, we have no business. We have no connection. Hallelujah. Satan can talk to you because you have something in common with him. This is why if you want to withstand the devil, you must give him no ground, zero tolerance. Amen. You, you know how on the highway it says, speeding, zero tolerance. And, uh, and they don't really mean it because they, they don't have enough checks. And you just, you're just going 120, it's on 100. Well, we say we won't tolerate, but we tolerate. We tolerate some kind of negative stinking thinking. We tolerate some kind of guilt. We tolerate something in the environment that doesn't belong there. And it could be an object. Yeah. I've had objects in the uni center. God's like, get rid of that thing. I throw it out. We tolerate something in the body, some kind of impulse, some kind of, some kind of energy. Yeah. And we don't stand against it because the greater one is in us. 
if we want to withstand the devil, we must first face the reality that the devil does attack. <laughs> and if he attacks, what are we to do? The Bible says, humble yourself, submit yourself to God, withstand the devil, and he will flee. Amen. We must recognize his attack, resist or return his attack, and he will flee. Amen. This is our strategy all. But it begins with recognition. The Bible says there's untold saints that have been dragged down to Hades, dragged down to the underworld because of Satan's attacks. You can't have a wide open mind. You can't walk around without the blood covering. No. You, your body must be a temple, and your environment must carry the presence of God. God. Amen. God. You know, the, the, my favorite music in the store is worship music. <laughs> you know, we we have we play music in the store downstairs. Whenever you guys go down to the store after hours or during it, if I'm in control of the music, I'm always playing worship. Music. I'm always creating an environment conducive to the presence of God. That's our natural habit. Yeah. In fact, I find that many saints that are converted, this naturally happens with, with them. It naturally happens to me, and no one, no one tells you. You stop listening to worldly music. Perfect. You just, I don't know, it, I didn't try. It just, all my music became worship music, naturally. And, and when worldly music come out, I always have an aversion. I'm like, nice tune. Can we change it? <laughs> Nothing in you responding yeah. anymore. Yeah, well, we don't have anything in common with it anymore. Hallelujah. That is, that is the overview. And, you know, amen. And, and we are going to examine these areas specifically now. And, and Satan mentioned focus again. And, and that, is, that is the primary issue. If you cannot continue to focus on God and His will... I tell you, that's the main reason why you're attacked. Every time you can't focus on God and His will, you are open to something in common. Because you're focusing on something. Mm -hmm. And if you're not focusing God and His will, then you're focused on the world, the five senses, the, your mind. You're going to get into what? Trouble. You will get into trouble. You will start to touch the enemy's things. You will start to make mistakes. He will start to make head road, in road in the different territories. Yeah. God forbid he gets all four territories. <laughs> you are truly overtaken. Yeah. You truly need God to raise up the standard because the enemy has come in like a flood. Yeah. Her. And there are some people like, you know, it, it, it's funny that. As you walk in the Spirit, it gives you a tremendous light and clarity. Like, people walk in, and have you ever met people like this? Their mind is so muddled. Like, they, they're just not clear. They're always like, oh, what is it, oh, the, the way they talk, the way they think. And you're always like, this, this. You, when you talk to people like this, you keep your sentences very short and precise because they can't focus for long. So you have to, like, this, this, this. Then they're like, got it. But then the next moment, they're muddled again. You know? So there's a lot of people in the world like that. Their minds are constantly beleaguered. Yeah. They can't focus and they got a million windows open. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at this a little more carefully. Uh, let's just recap with 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. Please go there. We just spent a few minutes on the scripture. This was our first scripture. Really everything is summarized here because if you get this scripture, you kind of get it all. Maybe that up with James 4, 7, was it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I just want to recap with that. Okay. Amen. Jesus. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare, we are caught in a civil war, my friends. An invisible, heavenly war, and we are in the middle are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings, reasonings translates as imaginations, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. This is the whole fight. The fight is 
truth. That's why Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Perfect. Jesus said, everyone who is a friend of me is a friend of the truth. Perfect. I am the truth. This fight is truth. What is truth? Truth is reality. Perfect. Truth is reality. We believe that there is a reality that is the truth that supersedes the physical, mental, environmental reality we find ourselves in. We call this the higher truth, the superseding truth, the true truth. Because everything else, the Bible says, is passing away. Anything that is true, anything that is a true reality will not pass away. Because it's true, it's stable, it's foundational, it's everlasting. The whole fight is how can I find the true reality in all these realities? Perfect. That is the challenge. We can live in a sensual reality our whole life. Yeah. We can live in a mental reality our whole life. Yeah. We can live in an emotional reality. Or we can live in the, what's going on in the world our whole life. Or we can live in God's reality. He said, the kingdom of my reality is at hand. And this reality is so sweet that you will not want to live in that other reality where you are dominated by the devil, separated from me, and trapped in a lower reality. Now, not only is the fight for what is the true reality, and many people debate this, what is the true reality, the true philosophy, the true religion, the true politics, but... What is the truth? Many people search for this, but how do you get there? We believe that the true reality is got to by faith. Amen. We don't use reason, we don't use sense. We don't use the mind to get to it. We don't use the five senses to get to it. We definitely don't listen to the world to get to it. Amen. We believe the Word of God to get to it. Amen. This is the whole fight. The fight is who has the true reality. And the Bible says, if you have the true reality, my works will testify. If you're walking with the true reality, you'll be able to do the things of Jesus. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, open the eyes of the blind, free the oppressed. Christ, the Bible says, Christ manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So every manifestation, every word, every action in you should be freeing somebody. Anybody in your vicinity. If it's not, then the enemy has some kind of inroad in your territory, and you're not either disconnected from God or you can't manifest the life and the light. This is the bold reality if you are in the true reality. The true reality testifies for itself. <laughs> Jesus said, if you don't believe in my reality, then believe in the works of my reality. Yeah. I couldn't be in this reality unless I could do these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. So every attack of Satan is to lead you away from submission to God. It's to lead you away from knowing God, or being or following God. Yeah. Now, when it says every thought and reasoning, you must understand that all these imaginations from the devil are are always going to lead you to sin. This is why many problems you have between the brothers and the sisters or, or in relationships is because the enemy is planting a thought. He's creating a reasoning, an imagination. It's not real. You don't really have a problem with this person. And they don't really have a problem with you. Satan planted it. You accepted it. And because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, you make it your reality. Man. I, it's kind of like, you know, you know when you, you know when you hear like, like people meet movie stars and they're so awestruck and, 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 they, and they have this huge imagination of, 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 of who the movie star is and they can't talk and they can't think and the movie star is just like me and you. Well, this is what we do. We have this amazing imagination that's been planted by the devil and we construct a reality around Sifu. Sifu ignores this. 
He doesn't really love me. He says he prays for me, but I bet he doesn't. Like, we make up something. Satan sells the makeup. We buy the makeup. And it becomes a hindrance in fellowship between me and my brother. Between me and God. Between me and my brother. Between me and my workplace. Satan is always trying to create division because he plants a divisive seed. Because he does not want peace, harmony, functionality. He does not want the kingdom of God. He's, his mission is always to separate you from God and torture God's separated children. Amen? He's out for revenge because he himself was cast out. He wants you cast out. Hallelujah? So, in other words, you know, Joyce Myers used to say this. Think about your thinking. I'll say it another way. Watch your thoughts. Do these belong in you? Are these from God? And if you're in God, your thoughts should only be in God. These should not be independent thoughts.